by the same 11 players who beat Celtic 2-1 at Celtic Park last week. One or two positional changes there, but still exactly the same team. And there's young Mark Fulton, under 21 international, who was left out of the side from the month of September until he came back to play centre-half against Celtic last week. And Kilmarnock showing just one change from the team which drew 1-1 with Aberdeen last week. Jim Clark coming in at number eight in place of George Maxwell. And that means a second Premier League match for third-choice goalkeeper Alistair Wilson, 19-year-old youth internationalist who signed from Irvine Meadow. He made his debut last week. So St. Merton set the game in motion. Lex Richardson winning number 10 after regularly winning number four jersey all season. We'll see what impact that has on the St. Merton tactical formation. There's Jimmy Bond battling with Derek McDicken. The first free kick of the match. Awarded to St. Merton, taken too quickly for the liking of the referee. And the man in charge this afternoon is Eddie Pringle of Edinburgh. John McCormick. Peter Weir. Trying to find a way past McLean. Winning the throw in for St. Merton, taken quickly. Richardson in an attacking role right away. That's Weir's cross. Chance there for Fulton to return it. Now Bobby Street breaking for Coman. Providing the width, forcing the ball forward. But Copeland is there before McBride. The throw into Kilmarnock. And St. Merton, who won last week against Celtic, hadn't won a league match before that since the 4th of October when they beat Kilmarnock 6 1 at Rugby Park. It's forced away by Beckett, now Houston. Firmly out by Fulton. Stuart McLean. And Mark Fulton covered a lot of ground to get over there to cut off that forward pass. Paul Clark's header. That's Copeland miss kicking. But still remaining alert enough to send it back to Thompson. Bone heading on. The race between Robertson and Sumner. Won by the Kilmarnock skipper. Over the top of Abercrombie. Played out by Fulton. A good one from deep by McLean, and a very awkward dipping shot. Short McLean trying the snapshot, and Billy Thompson had to move very late and very sharply to keep that one out. Good control from Stark, infield to Bone. Turning to for support on the near side towards Stark. Once again, Robertson's in quickly. Mike Trichester. Should be gone, playing it back. That's the cross, and it's headed out by McDicken. Helped on its way by Clark. Big turn, of course, in that Kilmarnock penalty box is Duke Sumner and he's being very close to Mark in the early stages but there's Bourne points of freedom that's the opening goal and that ball thrown forward from deep giving Bourne the chance to give St Mun the best possible start for the match so some question marks certainly for that Kilmarnock defence They've been marking Duke Sumner in the air very closely, but when that ball was returned after being cleared, Bone found themselves with lots of space to head the ball firmly behind Alistair Wilson. <laughs> Closed down very quickly by Bone. That's Sumner committing the foul on Robertson, the free kick to Kilmarnock. Jim 
Good ride, marked by Fulton. That's Paul Clark getting his head to it. That's a fine effort by Bobby Street. Well picked out by Thompson. And a free kick by Robertson picked out the header of Paul Clark. The header across goal giving Street the chance to try to flight one for the far top corner. But that's why Billy Thompson's in the Scottish international squad. From that to Bone. Good play. Stark working the one-two. The chance for Stark. And he just pulls the finishing shot wide of goal. But some very good close passing among the St. Martin forwards. Out of Crombie delaying too long. Bobby Street breaking. Infield looking for McBride. Good cover provided by Beckett. St. Martin again trying to play their way out of trouble. Now here's Sumner. Waiting for the support to arrive. We are to bone. Abercrombie back out to Richardson playing in left midfield Abercrombie send it in there Jimmy Vaughan and that's blocked by Houston appeals the handball but once again Jimmy Vaughan appearing on the blind side look at the cross coming over and at the blind side Jimmy Vaughan and the header destined for the far corner blocked by Houston Finding header here, ball in the break. Defenders closing in. Big Dickens. Petri foul. And the cross is too far ahead of Billy Stark, but some suggestions there that uh, Jimmy Bowen's arm was held by Big Dickens. There's referee Pringle. He is not impressed by the on the field. That's Burke winning the high one. Clark. Auckland. Another Crombie, the event presenting the challenge. Free kick to Coleman. There's Mocklin. Ladies and gentlemen, there's Book nodding it down. And just over the top there from Paul Clark. He's looking for the corner kick. But once again, the head of John Burke causing trouble in that St. Martin penalty box. Nodding the free kick into the path of Clark. And the first time shot just a little bit too high. Jimmy Bond. Well, police by McDickin at the bad pass back. Yes, Peter Weir. Well, a splendid effort from the narrow angle by Peter Weir. As though Jimmy Bones' run had been halted by Derek McDickin, but the pass back was straight to Weir. He took it wide of the goalkeeper, but as he did so, he closed down the angle and he couldn't quite find that very small target. Fulton again in the air. With them. Good skill for the big man. That's McBride and it's just over the top. Well, it was John Burke who started all that for Kilmarnock, showing a very great deal of dexterity on his feet. Heading past Fulton, playing it short in field to McBride. He had one quick look at the goal from the near post and had a goal. And that's another good effort. Just over the top. Burke, Raman, Beckett move forward very quickly. It's Bone. Peter Weir. And the shoot. for Alistair Wilson 64 minutes on the clock and you can see the cross from ball the diagonal ball finding Peter Weir his direct path 
the byline was blocked, he checked inside, found just a half yard to shoot. It wasn't a bad effort, but Alistair Wilson would have expected to save it. The very firm ground, giving the ball, no doubt, an awkward bounce to find its way into the corner of the net. So Peter Weir's first competitive goal of the season, he scored one in a friendly. Gives St. Man a two-goal lead at a time when they looked in danger of being pulled back to level terms by Kilmarnock's pressure. can turn quickly in a Premier League match. He played quite superbly for more than an hour, then had a bad break at the goal, and almost lost another there. Box hitter, done by Abercrombie. Clark coming well. This has been beaten by McDickin, this is Mocklin. He hopefully it's done for McBride. Fine effort from Jim McBride. Well, this young man certainly couldn't be grudged a goal. Well, it's certainly becoming more and more difficult as the pitch freezes quite noticeably. It's Billy Abercrombie. Richardson taking up good position. Spinning off McLean and McCormick missing the kick. Here's Alec Beckett. Well, he almost made it for the second week in a row. Burke's <laughs> header. With a chance for Houston. Bobby Houston. What magnificent goalkeeping from Billy Thompson. Houston appeared to have a golden opportunity after Copland slipped, they found a straight running in goal. Thompson advanced quickly. The shot went through his right-hand side, and look at that clutching on the part of Thompson.